Hello friends and welcome to my channel. I'm Juliana Michaels and in this video I have a bit of mixed media magic to share with you today. But before we get into that, did you know that 49 and Market recently teamed up with Sizzix and that the talented Katie Pertit has designed a set of gorgeous stamps and dies that are now available for your crafting pleasure? Well, I'm here to tell you they are amazing and I am so in love with the designs and images that I kind of couldn't stop myself once I started creating with them. That said, over the next couple of weeks, I'll be sharing all that I've created here on my own platform and then on the 49 and Market and on scrapbook.com YouTube channels. So stay tuned for all the inspiration coming your way. If you're interested in any of the supplies I've used in this video, you can find the full supply list with links in the description box below. To get to them, below the title of my video, click on the word more. That will expand the text box so you can see the links. When you shop through those links, you are supporting me and I really, really appreciate that so very much. Now let's get on with the making. introduce you to these stamp and die sets from 49 and Market designed by Katie Pertit and with Sizzix and they've come out with four large stamp and die sets and then four kind of smaller stamp die sets. So the first ones I'm going to go through here are all kind of are all layering stamp sets that come with coordinating dies. So first up is the painted pencil butterflies, just so you can kind of see the images in the stamp set. It comes with some outline images and then various layers that you can stamp in like light to dark on top of each other and create some really cool effects. You can use all of them or only one of them or combine only two of them. Like there's so many options for mixing and matching with these that um, there's really just endless possibilities. And then this set comes with dies to cut out the large and the small butterfly. And you know, you could also use these without the stamps if you wanted to cut out pattern paper um, or cardstock. So again, just loads of options with this set. The next one here is the painted pencil botanicals. And again, this set comes with a really cool outline image here and then some shadow layers that you can stamp in with different colors and again create some really cool effects. It also comes with a coordinating die that cuts out the large floral image and again you could cut this out of cardstock or pattern paper if you wanted to layer it or add you know, different effects with it. So again, lots of options. And next is the painted pencil leaves. And again, as you can see, it's got uh, an outline shape and then different leaves that you can stamp and create layered stamping with. So you could stamp this and then stamp this one and then this layer on top or below. And by using different shades of colors, you can really get some really cool effects. And then this set also comes with three kind of fun little splatter stamps. This set also has a coordinating die that cuts out the leaves. So, you know, you could actually even use it to just cut out if you wanted to use it with just the splatter layer, or you could use it with the outline layer. Again, you could use it on its own with just patterned paper or cardstock to um, just even get another fun effect. And so the last set here is called Painted Pencil Mushrooms. And it too comes with some outline images and then some shadow layers here, and then some smaller shadow type shapes that you can um, create some fun layers with, and then two splattered stamps. This set also comes with dies that cut out these larger mushrooms. So again, you've got all those options, as I've mentioned before, with how to use the dies and the stamps, depending on how you want to layer them and create your own custom designs. So with the smaller stamps, this one is called Engraved Wings. 
So this stamp set comes with two small butterflies and a dragonfly, and then it also has coordinating dies that go with each of those images. So I didn't mention this, but when you die cut with these dies and stamps, this die is gonna cut right along the edge of the stamped image. So you're not gonna have that white border that you get with a lot of other stamp and dies. This one is called Floral Mix Cluster. And this is just one stamp. So it has the floral image with this kind of fun text and graph distressed design with it. This stamp set also comes with a coordinating die that cuts out that floral image which you can use the stamp by itself without the die and get some, you know, just a really cool background. But then you can also stamp that a second time and die cut it and then layer it on top and add some really cool dimension with the die there. Next up is Regal Artsy Frame. And this is just a stamp set. So it's got three different layers that you can use independently or together depending on the colors of ink. So if you use, um, you know, light to dark ink colors, you can really create some cool layers if you combine these. But like I said, you can also use all of these separately to create some really cool effects and designs for your projects. And the last set here is called Hello You. And this is just a sentiment set that's just stamps. And so it's got um, several different sentiments and these are separate so you can stamp them separately you can layer them on top of each other so you just have a lot more flexibility with how you use the sentiments there's also four different splatter type stamps with this as well so you can use those to layer and create some really cool effects with this set now if if you aren't um, really familiar with working with clear acrylic stamps. I'm just gonna give you a little 101 kind of information on how to really get some good stamped images with these. When you first work with the stamp, you're gonna want to do something to kind of um, clean the surface of these because when they come from the manufacturers, they'll have kind of a like a residue on here. It'll prevent the ink from like sticking to the stamp, it'll kind of pool up on there a bit. So what I recommend before you ever use the stamps, one option is you can rub over the stamp with the palm of your hand. Um, that's one option. And then it'll kind of get like, like cloudy, which you can start seeing there. Another option is to take just like a white eraser and rub that several times kind of over the surface and you know then just kind of wipe off any of the like you get like that eraser dust and then you can see how it really kind of gets a little cloudy and that is when you're going to get the best adherence of the ink so i'm not now i'm going to show you kind of how this stamp which does not been um, cleaned or seasoned is another word you might come across when people are talking about doing this and um I'm just gonna, so I'm gonna just use a little archival ink here and peeled paint. And archival ink usually will give you kind of the best stamped image without doing any cleaning. Just because of the nature of the type of ink that it is with it being a permanent ink. So I'll just kind of wipe that off a little bit, but it's still, it's not been used much. So then if you just tried to go with just a regular, like a dye ink, you can really see how it really pools up on there and it doesn't, doesn't want to um, really stick to the ink pad or doesn't really want to stick to the stamp very well. So now I'm gonna take that image that I seasoned and we're gonna do that same stamping here. And you can see that even though it looked like it pulled up a little bit on there, it does, it definitely gives you a better, more solid stamped image when you've seasoned it. And 
can also stamp that with the archival ink so you can kind of see the difference you get there. So as you can see, the archival ink is, um, gives you a really nice crisp image as well. So, um, so just a couple options and things to kind of think about when you're working with these stamps. I personally don't have um, any other like dye ink brands as far as um, the other brands that are on the market. So I would, you still want to do this seasoning with um, any of those kinds of inks if you're gonna use them, just so that you get the best stamped images. So for this card, I'm gonna be working with the engraved wings, the floral mix cluster, Hello You in the Artsy Regal frame sets. The inks I'm gonna be working with is Distress Oxide ink for the background, but you could also use regular Distress ink or any kind of uh, dye ink that you can do for blending and doing backgrounds. The other inks I'm gonna be using are Ground Espresso Distress ink, so any kind of dye ink would work for this as well. And then I've got some archival ink in Peeled Paint, Frayed Burlap, and Ground Espresso. For these, you do need some sort of permanent waterproof ink because of um, how we're going to be working with some of the different mediums and water, and you need something that won't bleed. I'm also going to be working with some of the Distress Watercolor Pencils in Scorched Timber, Fossilized Amber, Shabby Shutters, Peeled Paint, and Scattered Straw. And then I have a water brush, but you could also use just a small paintbrush, a blending brush, and my Distress Sprayer. For the paper on this card, I'm going to be working with Distress Watercolor Paper. I just recommend some sort of watercolor paper for the techniques being used on this card. To start off with the background, I'm going to do an ink smushing technique, and I'm going to be using a Distress Oxide ink in Antique Linen, but you can use any color, and you could also use any kind of water reactive ink, so that could be a Distress ink, uh, just regular Distress ink, or any kind of a dye ink. And I'm working on Distress Watercolor Paper, because it can handle the water. So we're just gonna smush the ink pad onto my craft mat. Then I'm gonna spritz that with some water. Give it a good generous spritzing. And then I'm gonna smush the paper into the ink. And you can wipe it through these different ways of smushing. And and I like to just kind of get a coverage there of the ink, and then I'm gonna use my heat tool and dry that. And then once it's mostly dry, you can smush it again. Just kind of dab it back into those leftover ink splotches you have on your mat. And then you can dry again. And if um, holding the paper bothers your, you know, like if you're heat sensitive, you can also just place your paper either on, like if you're working on like a glass craft mat, or this is just a kitchen trivet, so that my mat doesn't warp. And then, you know, you can just repeat that smushing process as many times as you like. Th with this being such a light color, you're not gonna get a really vibrant background because it is a light color, um, but that's kind of what I'm looking for with the card design here. So now with that background dry, I'm gonna move on to the next step, which is to add some stamping to the background. So to do that, I'm gonna be working with the Hello You and the Floral Mix Cluster Stamp Sets from 49 and Market by Katie Pertit and Sizzix. And I'm just going to be kind of working on my stamping platform here. I'm just going to place that paper down into the corner here. And I'm going to stamp this image. I'm going to get it centered on my paper here. Because the next step, we're going to use um, the coordinating die and the stamp again. Um, on the card. All right, and the ink I'm gonna be working with here is uh, archival ink and ground espresso, um, any kind of a permanent 
waterproof ink would work really well, um, especially since we're stamping over an oxide ink. You want something that's not going to um, just react with the ink and kind of fade away. So a dye ink um, doesn't tend to stamp real well over the archival ink. Okay, so now, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take some of the images here, actually just um, some of the, the word, happiness. And actually, I'm just gonna use a little stamping block this time. I'm gonna repeat stamp this over the background using frayed burlap archival ink. I'm just gonna kind of stamp it here and there and stamping it once and then stamping it a second time to get kind of a lighter stamped image. And if you want some more um, of just like the stamped image like that lighter one, but you don't want another darker one, you can just stamp off on a scrap piece of paper and get that second image. All right. Again, all right, and I uh, also forgot. I also want to add some of these little squiggly lines here from the Artistry Regal Frame stamp set. So I'm going to use that stamping block again for this one just because I want to do it repeatedly and it's just a little easier than having to open and close the stamping platform. I'm not worried about like trying to get you know, some sort of perfect image. So it, you know, it doesn't really matter. And I'm just kind of rotating it around just to get so that it doesn't look like the same thing all over the, the background. And that's good. I'm going to go back to the Hello You set. And it's got some splatter stamps in here that I'm going to use as well. And again, I'm just going to use the stamping block and this color I'm going to use now is peeled paint. And again, I'm just going to kind of kind of stamping it here and there to create the effect of splatters without having to use a brush or ink, other kind of ink. So definitely a fun way to have controlled splatters. And what I'm doing is, as far as like play, figuring out where to stamp, I know that my, the die cut, or the, I know that the die that goes with this stamp just covers that area. So I kind of know to, so I'm not really worrying about stamping like the splatters here in the center because that's going to be covered up with our next step. All right, so we're gonna set this to the side and move on to the next step. So I'm gonna go back to that um, floral cluster stamp and I'm gonna stamp it again on another piece of the watercolor paper. 
And again, I'm gonna be using the archival ink. So you're gonna want a waterproof ink for this step as well as the watercolor paper because we're going to be coloring in this image with uh, watercolor pencils. So I'm gonna leave my paper and the stamp all here in position until I'm finished with the coloring. And as I mentioned, I'm gonna do the coloring with some watercolor pencils. You could also use um, any kind of, you could use any kind of ink. You could um, use the dye inks where you just kind of, you could stamp the um, stamp onto your, um, craft mat and use a brush to pick it up. Um, you could also use real watercolors. So like there's definitely different options for you. And so the colors I'm using are um, fossilized amber, scattered straw, peeled paint, and shabby shutters. And I'm just gonna kinda get a little color going here. I want my flowers to be yellow. Get me some water to get that flowing and moving around. I am by no means a watercolor expert. Maybe one of these days I'll take a class on it or something. That'd be kind of probably be fun to learn. A little bit more about how to do it better. <laughs> I'm gonna clean up my brush and I'm gonna let that dry and I'm gonna move on to a different color here. I'm gonna take some of the peeled paint and work on the leaves a little bit. I'm gonna let that that dry. honest like it's hard for me to determine like is this part of the leaf here I think that's part of the leaf I'm not gonna paint all this green here and now I'm gonna go let that dry then I'm gonna kind of go back and add a little bit of the scattered straw To me, it's kind of the nice thing about watercolor. You can't you really kind of can't mess it up. So now I'm just going to add some of the um, peeled paint. And kind of just blend that in with and then just blend that in with the uh, shabby shutters.
Okay. Oh, I'll leave that in there. Um, all right, so now that we're done with the coloring, I'm gonna put these to the side to dry before I put them, store them back up because um, while they're wet, that pigment will kind of transfer off onto whatever it touches. So I just like to kind of keep them on a paper towel until they're dry and then I'll put them away with the rest of my pencils. And then if that's still wet, you can take your heat tool and just give it a quick dry if you need to. Or you can just let it sit there and let it dry on its own, either way. Okay. And then once it's dry, we're going to re-stamp the image. And this will just kind of help it kind of pop out again a little bit. And yeah, I just always kind of like to re-stamp my images, especially if I after coloring over them again. There we are. So now I'm gonna take that coordinating die and uh, use just some sort of tape that, um, you can use this mint, this is mint tape or you can use some sort of a washi tape or some kind of low tack tape. And you're just gonna line that die up with the stamped image and then just use the tape to hold it in place and then you're gonna run this through your die cutting machine. And so here is what that image looks like and that is going to be how it will lay onto the background there. So I feel like this card needs another little something so I'm going to take that um, card watercolor cardstock that I stamped the flower image on. I'm going to use the winged or engraved wings stamp set and I'm going to just it's also got the coordinating dies, and I'm going to just stamp this small little butterfly image here to put onto the card. And I'm gonna repeat the same process that I did with the flower, so I'm gonna stamp it with the archival ink. And then I'm gonna add some color using the watercolor pencils. And if you ever get to like, oh, that you feel like there's, it's just going to getting solid with the coverage, just kind of clean off your brush and then just get, just get some plain water on there and then, um, and a clean brush and then use that to kind of help spread out the color that you already have on the paper so that you're not um, just making the whole thing all one color. And, and for the body, I'm just going to use a little, um, brown here, color that in. It'll work, let that dry. And this will get a little darker. Grab some of that scattered straw. And then now we're gonna re-stamp that image again, like I did earlier. And then I'm gonna use the coordinating die and die cut that out as well. So here's a look at the die cut butterfly that we have to add to the card. And now I'm gonna do the sentiment. I'm just gonna take um, another scrap of paper. This is still watercolor paper. And I'm gonna use the Hello You stamp set again. And I'm gonna stamp the Hello again with the archival ink and ground espresso. And then just to add a little color to this, I'm going to take the peeled paint watercolor pencil and my water brush 
and just use that to kind of color in these letters. Kind of give, gives the sentiment a little bit of a watercolor effect doing this, which I think is kind of cool and pretty. And then I'm gonna just trim this down using my paper trimmer. And to do that, I'm going to just line up the bottom of the letters with the guide here. And then trim off the bottom. And you can use that same guide so if you always line up things this with the same place so like here I'm going to line up the the edge of the letter that direction with the guide and then you just get an even border all the way around get that extra out of the way there and then now we're going to do the same thing on this edge And then, and then this one. And so there you have an uh, even border all the way around. If for some reason like it gets wonky or uneven and you've got this little piece and you can't hold on to it anymore, what I like to use is a just a real thin piece of um, craft stock actually. So just a any kind of a heavier duty thicker paper will work and then a piece of mint tape or some sort of um, tape that's not super sticky. And then I just leave that so just a little edge of it is hanging off the paper and, and I can use that to stick my paper in. So everything is straight and I have like extra space to hold on to things. And so then I can go back in and like reline things up and trim it off again if I need to. So, so there you go. Now with the background, I went ahead and I inked the edges of this with a little bit of ground espresso distress ink. Um, you could, you know, go darker and bring that in more. I just like the effect that kind of the framing effect that creates. It's just something I always really like to do. And if you wanted to distress this background even more, you could also add some ink or some water splatters with your distress sprayer. So just some options there. And then for this, I feel like this is just a little too stark against there. So I'm going to take just a little bit of that antique linen oxide and I'm just gonna kinda get a little onto my brush but then try to wipe some of it off because I don't want it to be super dark. Just wanna add a little bit of color to this paper. And then I'm gonna ink the edges of that now with that ground espresso. And so now I'm going to, um, I'll just finish assembling the card. You would hear these different layers with some foam adhesive and then um, layer another piece of paper behind this just to add another frame layer to the card. To finish off the card, I adhered the background I created to a piece of green patterned paper from 49 and Market. I then adhered the butterfly and floral die cuts as well as the sentiment with some double-sided foam adhesive to add a little dimension. Thanks so much for watching today. Until next time, stay crafty, my friend. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you can join me on a more regular basis. Hit the like if you enjoyed this video. And if you want to join me on my other social media platforms, you can find the links to those in the description box below. Also, feel free to leave me a comment if you have any questions or if there's something you'd love to share with me and our community. I'll see you in the comments below and in the next video.